Do you really enjoy camping and getting off the grid for a few days? Or perhaps you are just looking for the world's smallest 18650 power bank? Then, the Through Night TS-1 Survival Light should be on your radar. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. This is the TS-1 Survival Light by Through Night. Now, I gotta be honest, when they first sent this to me, I didn't know what to make of it. I was like, okay, you got a little like single cell battery light here with a dome on top. I've seen this kind of thing from Ace Beam, not too impressive. And I said, hey, and you know, besides the battery, this little adapter from Ace Beam was about, you know, five bucks. So I'm like, well, how much are they looking to sell this thing for? I looked it up and uh, the Amazon list price was $29.99, but there was a coupon for 20% off. So, you know, 25, 26 bucks. I'm like, 26 bucks, that seems kind of high. Well, then I realized that this thing is also a power bank. So it's not just, I mean, and, and yes, that's been done before, but there's some features about this that make it way better than what's come before it. So before I get too deep into all that, let's talk about what's in the box. It's got a nice little cardboard box here. I only mention it for gift giving purposes. It's got a nice little foam cut out and a little compartment at the bottom where all the cables were. But inside the box comes a cable set, but this isn't just your typical cable set. This is a specifically made cable set for this light to assist in its power bank functions. You see that you've got a USB-A over here, which can be pulled off to be a USB-C. And on the other end, you have the common different plugs you're going to need for charging, including a lightning port. That's one of those things you usually don't see. So here you get your micro USB if you got like a Samsung older device, a USB-C if you have a modern Samsung or modern Apple device like an iPad, and then right here you've got the lightning, which they're still using on the iPhones. Who knows why? It's crazy. Maybe Apple will finally unify this at some point. But you get your three most common ports right there. So you get this nice, and I, I like that it's long enough, but it's nice and lightweight and small, so it doesn't take up a lot of space in my backpack or shorts or whatever I got. It comes with the light itself, which has the battery in it, and a little top here, which is the light. And the light just kind of slips into the USB-C port on the side of the battery, okay? Then we also have a a hook that can go into your backpack or belt, but what's so cool about this thing is it's magnetic. So it uh, is definitely magnetic enough that it's not gonna come off easily. I'm pulling pretty hard on it right now before it, I mean, I gotta pull hard to get it off. So this is, uh, this is good. Um, and also I noticed that it's magnetically held in as well. So this little battery here, you can see it kind of like goes, see, and that's held in. So this is a cool little setup. Um, I'm gonna in ergonomics. I'm gonna get into some more fine details on this stuff, but I, I just want to point out right now that this is a well-designed setup. It's not like they just threw it together. And also, there's a manual. The manual is actually pretty darn big, but it's in a ton of languages. And I found that the actual section I needed down here at the bottom was actually pretty short. It's just this little square here at the bottom, and it basically tells you that it has three different lighting modes, and it has an SOS strobe. All right, let's talk about the battery itself. So this battery is an 18650 size, and it is protected on top, and it has full power bank features built in. So that means that this little battery can be charged straight from USB-C to a power source. It can regulate its charge. You don't need an external charger. It also means that it can charge up devices, and we're gonna get to that in the charging section later. But one of the things that sets it apart from other protected devices like this is that it actually has a little four light power meter at the top here and a button. So if you press this little button and hold it for three seconds, one, two, three, and let go, it gives you out of four how charged the battery is. That is the first time I've seen all these features in a battery like this and 18650. Usually you see these on the larger 21700s. The battery itself is also rate listed as 3400 milliamp hour, and I have been getting that in my testing. And also note that 
this battery is rated for one amp output. Now, some batteries like 18650s can be up to 25, 30 amps. But remember, the reason this is one amp is because it is protected. And the reason why you care about that is because you could literally slip this into your pocket with change and keys. And if the two poles get shorted, the protected circuit will save it and you won't get a fire in your pants. Although that sounds a little fun now that I think about it. All right, let's talk about the ergonomics and build quality. It's a simple device and it's entirely made of plastic except for the battery itself. And at first that might seem like a detractor, but it makes a lot of sense for a light like this. Plastic is lightweight, it's resilient, it doesn't dent, and it's corrosion resistant. So for all these reasons, I think the plastic is actually a good choice. And this is high quality plastic too. If you look at the loop itself here, or the hook I should say, Notice that it's designed so that it's got that reinforced little edge right there, and it's got this closure. So, for example, if I open the closure and I pull on it, it's already kind of hard to deform this thing. I can, but I'm putting a lot of force on it. But when I let it close, see that? Can't deform it. So, it's well designed. The, the sheath itself is completely held in place by magnetic force. So, for example, if I take this battery out and then hold it like this, you can see there's a little magnet at the bottom of the tube. That magnet sticks against the metal of the battery and kind of like sucks it in, right? Watch, I'll go like this and whoop, there you go. And it's enough force that I cannot shake it out. But it's not so much force that it isn't kind of easy just to kind of push it up right here. So they really got it figured out. The hook has an even stronger magnet. So when that comes on, then there's no getting this off by shaking it. And it takes eh, a fair amount of force to get it off. Not so much, again, that it would be a problem, but I'm not worried about this coming off this. If you were worried, maybe you were going through some heavy underbrush or something like that, notice that there's these little eyelets, those little cutouts right here where you could attach a safety line to the hook or your backpack. I also wanted to point out that this little light on the top, and this is another example of it being well-designed, is when you push it up, and it slips off like this, right? There's a little USB-C port. You can see the little top here kind of slips on. There's a little cutout for the positive end of the battery to slide. Now, because of that little cutout and because of this and just the way this is cut out right here on the edge, when this slips in and watch, it kind of goes over that light a little bit, I cannot push this off now. It's captive by the plastic sheath. So it's kind of neat that you have to get it up and then it slides off easily. But when it's down here, it won't come out. Let's talk about the UI. It's a simple to operate UI with one button. If you click it, it turns on. And if you click it, it turns off. So there's no press and hold to turn on. When it's on, so click, it always starts on low and the long press will cycle to the next mode. If you long press again, you'll get the third and final mode, which is high. And then if I long press again, I'll go back to low. So it's a low, medium, high rotation. And again, one click turns it off. Whichever mode you finish in, when you turn it off and come back on, it always starts in low again. It also has a hidden SOS mode, which is two taps from either off or on. So if I go click, click, it enters a cycling SOS pulse. All right, let's take a look at its lumens and runtime. So if you turn it on onto low, through night quotes it at five lumens and I get six. And then if we bump it up to medium, they say that we're gonna get 35 lumens and I get about 30. And if we bump it up to the highest mode, through night says I get 100 lumens, but I'm measuring about 71, 72. Also note, that this is a really efficient light on this high mode of around 72 lumens, which is, by the way, well enough to walk around in the forest by if you are in an emergency. This should last you eight hours. And if you're willing to go down to the lowest mode, it's going to last 120 hours, which if you think about the nighttime hours, that's 10 days of use. And then in the middle setting, you're going to get 20 hours of use, which again, nighttime hours, that's several days. The SOS function 
lasts for 12 hours continuous, and obviously it's oscillating at its brightest level. All right, I just measured the light, and it's a very gorgeous 3000K, which is ideal for like nighttime reading in a tent or just even indoors in your house. And look at this. It's 52 points under the BBL. So it's a nice rosy tint and skin tones look so beautiful under it. Also, it's not a high CRI light, but I would call it like a medium CRI because it's not 60 or 70. It's about 82 and the R9 is actually positive. The R9 is not a high value, but the R9 is positive in around 10. So all in all, I think this is exactly the kind of emitter you want for a light like this. Something that's efficient, something that's pleasing to the eye, and tint matters so much more than even CCT or CRI. And trust me, this looks great to my eyes. All right, let's talk about charging. First off, a really nice feature is that even though this is a custom 18650 battery power bank with all its UI and everything on the top here, it is still form factor designed to fit in standalone chargers. There's no problem with putting this, for example, in my Sky RC MC3000. fits perfectly. Now, you can just plug a USB-C straight in here, and when you do, the little indicators on top flash up like this to indicate that the battery is charging, okay? It tells you what charge level it's at, and I told you this is kind of in the middle, so you can see that by the fact that there's a couple lights on here and the last one is blinking, meaning that it isn't fully all the way up yet. But I wanna show the charging rate, and I've got a little USB diagnostic tool here. So we're gonna plug the power source into the meter here. Then I'll plug another USB-C to USB-C here, and then I'll go ahead and plug it in like this so that we can see what's going on. And we see that it's charging at about almost one amp. See, 0.92 right there. So this is actually a pretty quick charge for in battery. And the battery is rated as one amp in and one amp out, and I'm seeing that. We can also read the protocols here, and I'm going to get to that more in the next section, which is power bank. But uh, this is a really nice standalone charging battery. Uh, I would have been disappointed if this was half an amp or less. Now let's take a look at its power bank functions. So now I have this cable that is going to be powered from the battery. So I get the battery plugged in. And you'll notice that when it's in power bank mode, the lights up here will go green and stay solid green while it's supplying power. Now, even though it's not applying power to this meter right now, because obviously the meter is running off this cable, notice that it is not reading as green lights right here. That's because it's intelligent enough to know that this is not enough to be actually powering a device. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my own Apple Lightning cable, and I'm going to plug this into my iPhone. So let me grab this over here, set this down for a second, plug it into my iPhone, which is actually what I'm recording on, and you'll see that it's lit up and it's solid green, indicating that it is discharging, not charging. Charging will always be flashing upwards. And we can also see that the rate it's discharging at, which is almost an amp, it's about 0.9 fluctuating. So the battery lives up to its design of one amp in and out, and I find this to be a super convenient, super lightweight power bank. You really only need to carry this cell and this little tiny cable or something like it. So that's an amazingly convenient power bank. And one last thing I want to point out is right here we have the protocols. Let me unhook my phone for a second. Okay, I've unhooked it. And you can see... Let's see here, there we go. You can see that two protocols come up. We got a two amp Samsung and the DCP five volt 1.5 amp. Now, basically this battery, the most it can output is one amp. So don't expect the two amp to be achieved. But what this tells me is that any devices that support these two protocols will charge USB-C to USB-C. So, if you've had power banks in the past that had to be A to C to work, this should work C to C with any devices that support these two protocols, which these are older protocols, and I suspect that almost all the modern Samsung and iPhones will support it. So in conclusion, after using this light for a bit, 
I find that it really does do everything it sets forth to do well. That is, it provides a nice glow of warm, rosy, medium CRI light that's efficient in a lightweight, rugged container that has a power bank function which works excellently with my iPhone as well as my other devices. So I find it well thought out. And, you know, initially that price of $29 list or about $26 with the coupon sounded high, but the more I think about it, the more I think that this is actually not a bad deal because I, I just love this idea of emergency power, right? Um, I used to buy power banks that were way big, you know, right? And they had, you know, two and three 21700s in them. And they just got so cumbersome that I never carried them anymore. Then when I did need emergency power, I didn't have it. So this idea of slimming down a power bank to the bare essentials really appeals to me. And this is a recommended buy from me. Be sure to check out my other videos and reviews. And uh, I just re released a video, kind of an esoteric video this weekend about pulling a Astrolux FT-03S apart and flashing it to Endurial 2. So if you're interested in that kind of nerdier modding kind of stuff, definitely check out that video and I'll see you in the next one.